I claimed in the last video that we would eventually be able to produce an adjunction diagram. This guy here. So our goal in this video is just to define just to define the relevant functors, to define gamma and lambda. So let's start with gamma because it's easier. So let's start with gamma. Alright. Well, Gamma starts with a space over x, and it's going to end up giving us a um, presheaf. As always, a presheaf of sets on x. So that's what gamma should be doing. Let me just say that I'm going to follow the convention, or maybe convention is a generous uh, term. The I'm going to exhibit some laziness by only defining gamma on objects. So maybe there's this tradition of just defining functors on objects and leaving defining the functor on arrows as an exercise, and I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to define gamma on objects. So I want to tell you, we need to tell what happens to a space over x. Okay, well, let's suppose that we've got some space over x. So we've got that space, we'll call it E, sitting up here. We've got x sitting down here, and we'll call this map p. So what does gamma take this to? Well, it better take it to a presheaf. It's going to take it to the presheaf. We'll call it gamma of e. And let's define what this presheaf is, or let's see what this presheaf is. So the way it's defined is as follows. Let's let u be an open set of x. We want to define gamma of E evaluated at that open set U. And what it's going to be is the set of all continuous maps from U into the over space, the space over X, such that this diagram commutes, such that we'll have U down here, the inclusion of U into X, then we'll have E. P, S, such that this guy commutes. So that's what gamma of E evaluated at U is. It's the set of all continuous functions from U into E that make this diagram commute. This is the so-called sheaf, or I guess at this point pre-sheaf, of sections. These maps S are called sections. So it's everything which makes this diagram commute. All right, and that's pretty much all there is to say about gamma. That's how gamma is defined. And one can check that one well, maybe I should say a little bit, well, I guess following that same tradition, I shouldn't have to tell you what the presheaf is on restrictions. I shouldn't have to say what the restriction maps are. But it's just functional restriction. And I think that makes sense if you take a couple of seconds to think about it. OK, so let's move on to lambda, which is a little bit more painful to define. Okay, so now for lambda. All right, well, what are we trying to do? Lambda should start with a presheaf, and it should end up giving us a space over, over x. All right, it's presheaf on x. Okay, so how's that going to work? Well, maybe there are two things to specify. First, we should specify that space is a set. Shoot as a set. And then we should specify what the topology is on that set. So specifying what the set is is not very hard. We can do that in a second. It's specifying the topology that's painful. So as a set, um, well, let's say we start out with some, uh, let's say have some, some pre-sheaf. F, and as a set, we want to define what gamma of F is. It's got to be some space. And the underlying set of that space is the disjoint union over all points X inside of X of the fibers or stocks F of X. Maybe I should make it clear this is for the point X. So that wasn't so bad. 
So now let's try to define the topology. And to do this, in order to kind of fulfill uh, this goal, I'm going to have to introduce a little bit of notation. Maybe introduce a concept. So, okay, let's let. So this is kind of a side remark, and that I'm you know telling you something so that I can give this definition, but it's a logically necessary side remark because we'll need what I'm about to say in order to define this topology. So let's just say we have some open set U of X. Okay, and let's choose some element A inside of F of U. So F is a presheaf, F of U is a set. We're choosing an element A in that set. Okay, so there is a function. Uh, maybe A gives a function, gives rise to a function. Which I'll denote by a dot from U into this disjoint union. Call this a dot. And this will be f of x. And the way that it does this is by taking the point u and u. This is going to map to this element in the disjoint union. We'll take the product over all points u inside of u of a, the image of a in the stock at u. So what I mean by this is that, you know, for any u and u, maybe I'll put this in a different color. All that I'm trying to do now is define this, what this means. So what this means is that, well, for any u and u, we're going to have a map, right, from f of u into the stock at little u. And this map is just going to be um, projection, right? This is a direct limit. or Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so this is a direct limit, and we can just kind of take the image of an element in here and put it over here. So that's what a of u is. We've got a in here. We're mapping this guy to a of u. That's what I mean by this map, just kind of projection onto the stock by this direct limit thing. So that's what this function is. That's what a dot is. OK, so given that, here's how we define the topology. So the topology is the weakest one such that for all u and maybe for all open u inside of x and all a inside of f of u, the map a dot, as defined below, from u into this disjoint union, is continuous. So maybe just to rephrase the same definition, it's going to be the topology generated by all of the images the a dots of the u's. So you take all of the u's, you take all of the a dots, you take all those sets, you make them kind of your starting basis, their basis for your topology. The topology generated by stipulating that these guys are open sets is the one we want. And that's just another way of saying the weakest topology such that all of these guys are continuous. Okay, so that's it, I believe. We've defined what lambda of f is on a set, and we've also defined what the topology is. So we've succeeded in defining lambda. And that's it for this video.